right, folks, we're back. What we're going to do now is we're going to uh, we're going to make some marks on this rod to uh, to space out the guides. Now, this particular customer he wanted uh, he wanted micro guides, and I've got a seven foot rod going on here now. One of the first measurements I should uh, I should inform you about is the distance between where approximately the face of the reel is and the first guide or the guide which is called a stripper guide. Uh, that distance can vary. It's not really set in stone, but uh, some of if you look at if you go to any factory rod, they're usually right around 19 to 21 inches, depending on what your preference is. And it, like I said, it's really nothing set in stone. Uh, I like mine in that 19 to 21 range, so that's kind of the first thing I do is I'll, uh, I'll take my pen or my marking pencil or whatever it is and I'll go from about where I think the face of the real, seat, real face is going to be and I'll mark off 20 inches, kind of just as a reference, okay? Then what I'll do, and I'll, like I said, this guy's going to have micro guides, which means you're going to have about 13 guides on this. So what I'll do is with a micro guide setup, I usually, and I don't have a tip top on here, and a lot of guys will put their tip top on right away. I don't do that. I, I leave my tip top off. That's the last thing I put on in actuality. And with micro guides, knowing that there's as many as there's going to be, uh, 11 to 13, somewhere in there, I'll start off, I'll measure the first guide to be about two inches. And the neat thing about micro guides is that the spacing isn't, severely critical. I haven't found it to be severely critical yet. You can buy these whiz-bang devices that'll tell you guide spacing and all this kind of business, but at the end, when it's all said and done, it's really on micro guides, it's really not ultimately that critical. So I'll start off, I'll mark the first one about two inches. Now if you want to, you can certainly utilize their little charts uh, by all means. It's nothing saying you can't there's certainly a good starting point or a decent enough guide. I just, from experience, I kind of know what I like. So I do the first one at two inches. The next one I'll do at like two and a quarter. And then the one after that I'll do two and a half. And then the one after that I'll do two and three quarter. And then I'll do three. Because the that'll put the guides all nice and close together on the tip of the rod and quite frankly this is the part of the rod that needs the most support and needs the most help. So then once I've done the three inch guide I'll do three and a half and then I'll do four and then I'll do five Six, seven, eight, and now I've got three inches left between that guide and where I like to have the, the first stripper. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, that's only 11 guides I could put in. I could certainly have enough room to put in one more guide. Or I can take one guide out, but I don't want to have any less than 11. So I'll go back to where it was, to where it was three. So it's three, three and a half, four, we'll do four and a half. Five, five and a half, six, and I have eight and a half or eight and a quarter left. So I'm fine there. I can actually fudge it just a little. Now, that's with micro guides. Micro guides aren't terribly critical on placement. If you're going to go with a standard guide set, placement's a little more important. And I will go over a standard guide set later on in the video. 
this is how I mark off regular guides and I will or micro guides start off at two quarter inch increments till about three or four inches and then I'll start spreading my spacing out until my stripper guide ends up where I would ultimately like it to be very short spacing on the tip of the rod because that's where the most flex is and that's where you want the most support and quite frankly that's where you want the most sensitivity and then space them out wider as you go so now I'll cut the video off I'll grab another rod and I will mark that one out for standard guides and then I will explain why alright here I have a new rod uh, which has no guides on it. I've gone ahead and marked where I would like my stripper to be, which is right here. Gives it a, about 19, 20 inches from the face of the reel. Now on a regular rod, you're going to have far less guides. On a seven foot rod, you're talking seven, maybe eight guides uh, in most kits. I personally don't ever think that enough guides are put on a fishing rod, so I usually end up adding one or two more than what you would get if you get a guide set. I uh, usually add one or two more of the smaller ones. But ultimately uh, what you're looking at is you're looking at far less guides and far wider spacing out. You still want to keep the spacing on the tip reasonably close together and as you further yourself down the blank you can spread them out just a little more more as the rod stiffens out. But that first guide, again, uh, some manufacturers will, uh, will send you a recommended spacing chart. That's a great starting point if you want to go there. Uh, I, I don't take a whole lot of stock in those recommended spacing charts. It's adequate, but it's not, in my opinion, it's not the correct way to space out guides. But what I'll do is rather than use the recommended spacing chart, I'll use the recommended edge spacing and I'll start off at three for the first guide and then four which will give me seven inches five which will give me twelve inches six which will give me eighteen seven which will give me twenty five eight which will give me thirty three and nine will give me forty two and then ten is fifty two that works out almost perfect so how many guides is that one two three four five six seven eight guides right on the money so I basically started off at three inches four inches 5 inches, 6 inches, 7 inches, 8 inches, 9 inches, 10 inches, and that gives me 8 guides on a 7 foot rod. That's, in my opinion, barely adequate, but it's a good place to start your spacings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I am going to wrap this rod on that spacing set, and then I'm going to show you how to check to verify that your spacing is correct. Usually this is pretty close. Usually. Uh, with some adjustments needed later, but the next step will be to actually wrap the rod itself. So uh, rather than bore you with the, with the details on the rod wrapping itself, I will, uh, I will fast forward through that portion of it and we will talk about it when it's said and done. <clears throat> of the tip top which is like I said before the last thing that I put on so what we do now is uh, 
Remember when we set the real seat, we spined the blank to match the real seat. So now what we have to do is we have to line the guides up to match the spine, which is ultimately basically just looking down the rod blank at the real seat and moving the guides a little bit so that they all line up. This is, uh, I find to be a much quicker and much more effective way of lining the guides up than what you would probably see traditionally in most other fishing rod instructional videos, which would be to go down the rod and mark all the guides on the spine and then wrap the guides along that mark. If you do it this way, you don't have to be quite so fussy during the wrapping process. And you can just focus on wrapping and you can make your adjustments later. Because these turn relatively easily when they're still just in the thread. I mean the thread holds them pretty strong but not quite that, not quite that strong. So we got one that's a little out of whack. That one's still a little out of whack. There we go. You got to sight down them anyway to check them regardless. You might as well just make all your adjustments at once. Okay, so we're pretty good there. Now we're perfect. Now we're perfect. All right, so we've got all the guides lined up, and they're lined up on the spine. And I'm going to show you this. Let's, uh, let's bring the camera up a little closer. So when I take this rod and I go ahead and bend it, you can see the guides are right even with the with the spine of the blank. So that's exactly where they need to be. Let's see my real seat uh, came apart down here, no big deal, just screw it back on. Okay, so now what I do is I take and I lock this back down to my rod wrapper, nice and tight so I can't move it. Just like so. Back this off a little. Because now what we need to do is we need to put on a tip top. Lock this down, get it in a nice straight configuration. Tip top. So we take a tip top, correct the one that's correctly sized for the rod, which this one is. Take our razor blade and we cut off a thin strip of hot glue. That's all this is, is hot glue that you use for a craft hot glue gun. And then I cut it into cut it into little sticks. Like that right there. Little stick of hot glue. I cut several of those. Three should probably be enough. Then I take my tip top. And I just put that stick of glue down in the tip top there, just like that. Pack it in there. Might take two, might take three, depends on the size of the tip top and how big you cut your sticks. So I got two sticks in there, just like that. Perfect. Now, you take your, take a, take a little torch, a cigarette lighter will work, any kind of heat source, really hot glue melts relatively easy, and a pliers, 
small needle nose type variety would be preferred. You grab the tip top like so with the pliers. You get your little torch and you melt that hot glue. Don't hold it there for too long. Keep your, keep your torch moving or keep your heat source moving because if you hold it there for too long you'll actually wreck the guide. Or wreck the tip top. You just get it nice and warm so the glue is melted and before the glue cools off stick the tip top on there and you got to kind of hold it in place be careful because it's warm and as the glue starts to set up it'll hold it and then you can make your adjustment and line it up with the end of that last guide just like so now you let it sit for just a few seconds and it should be Save those little slivers of glue because you can use those later. You'll find that uh, after a while you'll have little slivers of glue all over your rod bench. So now that tip top's in place, you can take these off. Now here's where the adjustment comes into play. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of this string so it shows up a little better in the camera. And I'm going to thread this down the rod. I'm going to thread it all the way down to where the reel would be. And I'll show you why here in a second. Because what we're going to do is we're going to check the guide spacing for gaps or flat spots in the line and that all has to do with where you place your guides so you just taken most guys would they'd strap a reel on but I don't have a reel handy right now I should have grabbed one that's my fault I apologize taken Tie this into a tie this into a knot. Put it on the bottom of this rod here. Okay, so now adjust this camera a little. We've got a we've got a line run through this rod. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to take, set the rod on the ground, and we're going to put a bend in this rod using the string, just like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to determine whether or not this rod's got flat spots in it. And this actually isn't too bad. What you do is you check, you follow the line around here, and we actually could use a little bit more of a guide here basically for the most part what I could really use here is I could use another guide. This will this will be sufficient. This will do the job. But you can you can see here there's there's the space doesn't change all that much. The space doesn't change all that much and right here the gap really starts to widen out in between the line and the blank. This one's not too bad so this one's close enough but right here and right here and even right here the gap starts to widen out pretty good as the rod bends and we really could use bring this guy down a little bring this guy down a little bring this guy down a little and probably put one more guide in here to get rid of those flat spots but this would this would suffice and that will that'll certainly do the job but that's that's how you check your spacing on your guides and that's that's why the recommended guide spacing chart that you utilize from the from the blank manufacturers that, that's kind of bunk I, I don't take a whole lot of stock in it I, I'd much rather put a bend in it and do what's called a bend test which is what this is and, and minimize these gaps in between the blank and the line and this like I said this one isn't this one isn't too bad it's it's certainly tolerable. It's better than what you would uh, what you'd see in a store, but we can we can live with that.
So anyway, that's that's how you space out and check the guide spacing on a standard set of guides. Like I said before, with uh, with micro guides, you really won't have that problem because there's a lot of them on there, and there's just no way that you're not going to have enough guides on there. So uh, that being the case, what uh, what our next step is going to be is to be doing uh, some decorative butt wrapping, which will be on another episode. This guide. These guides are basically where they need to be and we're going to leave them there as they are and we'll, uh, we'll come back on the next episode and we'll do, we'll do some decorative wrap down here. We'll apply some decals, uh, put in a hook keeper and put in some rod data uh, decals on the butt section of the rod. So until then, uh, practice up on wrapping some, wrapping some guides. You can practice on a regular old piece of dowel and some guides. Uh, just practice getting that wrap so you can uh, come time to put it on your rod.